Today, I want to take you on a journey, my journey. And it all started with my mom and dad. My dad had big dreams. He wanted to travel the world and implement amazing things. My mother had dreams of her own, but also supported my dad with love and compassion. Then my, my mom and my dad had me and my brother, and we were really young, and they took us along on their adventures. Now, one of their adventures took us to a place where women and men don't have equal rights. And me, as a young girl, I wondered, why is that? My mom explained to me that regardless, you should always go for what you believe in. If you have a passion or idea, you should go for it. And that's what I remembered all along my journey. So later, we moved back to Belgium, our home. And by that time, me and my brother were already in high school. Now, I was interested in so many subjects, but finally, I selected economics and math. Now, as I progressed in high school, I realized what really interested me was medicine, and especially the impact it can have on the world. But to get into medical school is really tough. In Belgium, we have an entrance exam for which you need a science background. A science background I did not have, except for math. So I had to work really, really hard to get into medical school. And remembering the words of my mom, saying that you just have to go for it if you want to do it. And luckily, I got into medical school, obviously. Um, but when I finally did, I also felt a little sad because I had studied economics and math for five years, and now I can't use it anymore. So I, I tried to look for ways that I could. And I think it was in my first year that students were talking, well, what if we could design an application that mobilizes CPR trained volunteers to arrive on scene faster than an ambulance could? So I started thinking about this and we worked out a team together so we can hire developers and actually get this application running. But before I continue about my journey, what is the application actually about? So like I said, it's my journey to the ultimate life-saving application. But what is the background of this application? So in Belgium, 10,000 people a year have a heart attack outside the hospital. Now, when it's out the hospital, you don't know what to do. Well, most people don't, and there's no medical help available. So let's take a sample of those 10,000 people, 50, and let's see what happens when they have a heart attack. In Belgium, on average, only 9% survives. So in our sample of 50 people, only four will survive. I was completely stunned by these numbers, and that is why we are so motivated to get an application out there like this. Because if we want to get somebody or something to get to write CPR faster, then maybe we can reduce the time of the ambulance. So a study in, in um, Britain studied that, and they found that if we want to reduce the, um, the time until the ambulance arrives, it would cost the government millions of euros each year. Now, in Belgium, over half a million people know CPR. That is 6% of our population. And that number is only growing as there are more and more campaigns about CPR at school, CPR at work, but even free courses in the Red Cross. Now, these people that know CPR, they could be anybody. They could be a neighbor, a passerby, or even you. Maybe you already know CPR. So wouldn't it be great if we could locate and mobilize those people to get on scene faster than the ambulance? Now we thought about that, and let's see what happens to our 50 people if somebody gets on scene faster than the ambulance. 18 people survive. Because when you provide CPR faster, your survival rates increase to 30%. Now, that number was just so shocking to us, so we thought, okay, we really need this. We need to get people on scene faster. But how does it actually work? You have a medical emergency, and you call the, uh, the European emergency number 112. And they mobilize an ambulance, which takes on average eight minutes in urban areas and 14 minutes in rural areas. Now, if you know that your chances of survival after a heart attack drop 10% each minute, that means, in best case scenario, your chances of survival are 20% going down to 0%. 
Now with EVAP, if the emergency dispatch center recognizes the emergency as a heart attack, they could use our application to locate and mobilize these CPR trained volunteers to get on scene faster, provide CPR faster, and save so many lives. This is what the app looks like. You see a profile, you see the call that comes in for a navigation, and you also see a map with nearby AEDs, or automatic external defibrillators, to restart the heart. Now, the AED part is really important, because if you can get an AED with you, your chance of survival go up to even 70%. So these are the things that make the difference, the crucial difference between life and death. So let's take an example. I'm walking on, on Gensen Peter's plane um, and I get a push notification on my phone. If I accept the call, it will tell me where the person is, it will actively navigate me to the scene, but it will also tell me if there are nearby AEDs. On top of that, there are um, features inside the application to see if there are nearby hospitals, but also if you need more assistance, you want to mobilize more people to get there. So let's get back to the journey. I was in medical school, this was my second year, we worked out the team, we hired developers, and we were so excited about this because the core of this project is an NGO, a non-governmental organization. So we only want this application out there. We don't want any profit. Now, we worked together. I think we were five people by then, yes, and the developers as well. And we worked really hard. We were guided by professors and iMinds and Dürf von der Neemen. But at the end of the day, being an entrepreneur is really about figuring it out as you go, just going for it, learning as you progress, learning as your company progresses. So we worked out the application and we were five people, but I realized that I was the only woman there. So that's 20% of the organization that was just a woman, but in my medical school, we have 60% females. So what's going on? Why are there not more women in organizations? How can we have 60% women in med school, but not in the entrepreneur world? So I can only speak for myself, but walking down the entrepreneur path has taught me so many vital skills. It has taught me time management, it has taught me entrepreneurship, how an app goes into development that not only aid in setting up a company, but also for my current education. I have actually learned how to balance these two worlds and still be successful in my education. And I will take that on as I progress and in further professional life. So I see no reason why another woman or another man would do the same thing. Now, then that's when I realized that and it really confronted me. So I asked my friends, why are there not more of you joining organizations like this? Most of them were held back because they didn't feel like they could combine education with it. But for me, it was on the contrary, because as a student, I felt I have much more time at my disposal for when I was a full-time working doctor, working late nights, working weekend shifts. So that really got me thinking, and I think this is what the, the whole idea of TEDx Gend Women in STEM is all about, is getting more women to participate. If I can do it, you can do it. This is what it's all about. Now, let's get back to the application. This might be the ultimate life-saving application, and could be applied to even other situations other than heart attacks. We started for heart attacks for two simple reasons. You have a very high incidence of 10,000 a year, and it doesn't require a lot of medical material. There are AEDs that are already out there, CPR trainees that are already out there. We just really combined the two. So that's what I really started wondering about. And then I looked if there are any more applications out there, and we found there's one that is really exciting. It's Care Kit by Apple. I'm not sure if anyone in the audience is familiar with it. It's an application that empowers the patients to take more of an active role in their healthcare. It allows them to track their medical medicine, their treatment, but it also allows them to share this information with doctors and nurses. So we can provide even a better health to these people. Now, 
CareKit was developed by Apple, but even us as students, as an NGO, were able to set up this application and works to work implementation. Isn't that great? These things could happen? Applications that are formed are not yet formed. It's all possible. It's not the limit of basic technology. It's the effect you can have. In this case, it could be a real life-saving effect. Now, EVAP could be applied in Belgium, could be applied in Europe, but could be applied globally. Just imagine what the effect could be of a simple application like this using simple technology. Thank you.